You got it on that end, right? Well, joints are precious. <laughs> that, that's what I'm not saying. All right, well, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study, church service, get together, whatever you want to call it. We know we're a little light tonight, but we kind of expected that with the wet weather, so we're grateful to God that anybody showed up at all. With this weather, I tell you, it gets slippery. And they say that as soon as it starts raining, is the worst because all that stuff that's dripped off the cars makes it the most slipperiest. And if you haven't already guessed it by now, we have a very dangerous intersection here at 301 and Jane's Drive. I love every one of you, so please be safe when you pull out on that road. I've seen some close ones already. It's good to see everybody. We're ready to start service. We're going to sing this song, Sacrifice of Praise. You know what? Stand up, sing it with us. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the
Father God, we thank you so much for being with us this evening. We thank you for bringing us safe once again to your house. Father God, we just, we're just so excited to be able to dig into the Word of God, hear the Word of God. And we're just so grateful for those that have made it out, those that are listening in on Facebook. Father God, we, we pray that someone gets blessed this evening. Seeds get planted. Uh, a relationship grows, and it'll all be for your glory. Father God, we thank you for being with us now. Bless this entire service, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Once again, it's good to see everybody. Pastor Brian made it. Good to see you, brother. I know you came from Sefner. That's a ride, especially in the rain. So good to have him with us again. Good to see him. Uh, this is Pastor Brian, everybody. I've introduced you to him. He, uh, he came. We went and had lunch. A lot going on in his camp. I want to open up the floor to um, prayer request. I'll start, as usual. I want to remember uh, Sister Vi, Brother Roland. They've got a lot going on in their camp. Pray for their daughter, Tina. Uh, Sister Vi and, and Roland still experiencing a lot of pain, a lot of stuff medically going on from the accident they had months ago and surgery since. So let's remember to lift them up in prayer. I want to remember Roy McCall. Um, we've prayed for him. He attends. He's one of our northerners that go and then come back. And um, Mama Pat says that uh, he's, he's got pneumonia again. And uh, they thought they had it licked, but it's back, and he's not doing well. So we want to remember him. Uh, Claire Seeley, still in rehab. Uh, she's over at Plaza West and still trying to get her to drink, having trouble getting those, those kidneys working and, and getting the function where it needs to be before they want to let her go. And Brother Bill's beside himself because he's trying to encourage her to drink, and she just doesn't feel like it, she says. So uh, prayer that... Uh, Pray that God move in their life and give Bill some comfort. He's concerned about her. Uh, Sister Dot Carver uh, looks weak, uh, still healing up from her hip surgery. She fell. I believe there's a couple falls that happened, but uh, she's had surgery and she's in rehab. And uh, her and Brother Charlie still kind of getting around kind of slow. So remember, they're dying to get back to church. And we're praying that God get them back to us as soon as he can. I want to remember Jeff and Linda Webster. Mom and son, they come, and uh, I know Jeff is really dealing with some stuff, past things. He, he continues to hang on to things that he remembers and thinks that he's not forgiven for them, and I'll just leave it there. So just remember, and, and Sister Linda trying to be supportive, her kids, um, her son, one of them's passed away, another one's incarcerated. So she's, it's tough. She's a prayer warrior, though, and she believes in prayer. She knows the power of it. So remember them. And... Uh, and Brother Brian, I had him written down, and then he shows up. That's awesome. So just pray for leadership for this church, praying that God move and be in everything that we do. Does anybody else have a prayer request tonight? Yes, Miss Peggy. That's Laura's granddaughter? Yeah, Laura's granddaughter. Okay. She's two years old. She's one and a half years old. She's one and a half. You said one and a half, Peggy? Yeah. Okay. She's a baby, right? Yeah. She's an infant. Okay. <laughs> That's what they are, I think. <laughs> yes, Brother Kip. <laughs> um, man, he had me the whole hook, line, and sinker. I was like, huh? huh? Who? He's right back there celebrating his 89th birthday. 80, how? 86? 86? I thought you looked like you were 28, man. Look good, Brother Donald. That's good. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Prayer requests? Yes, Miss Ginger. Jenny? Flying, you said? What's your best friend's Alice. name? Alice. Someone else? Miss Deanna and Brother Jim. Bob, I'm sorry.
divine intersection, brother. That's good. God's good like that, man. That's good. And you're close to your neighbor, I can tell. Yes. Well, that's... Praise God that you were there, man. He, he, he does that. God's a good God, man. He's got angels everywhere. This one's called Bob Dahl. <laughs> that's good. Anybody else have a prayer? Yes, Miss Penny? We're talking about the same Earl, I know then. Yeah, he Earl. Anybody else? Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, I, you're, you're, you're an awesome God. God, you're God, you're good, and we thank you for our blessings. We thank you for all the things that you bestow upon us. We thank you for looking out for us. We thank you for the free country we live in. Uh, we thank you for those that have died honorably, Father God, to protect the freedoms that allow us to gather on Wednesday night and, and talk about your word and learn of your word, Father God. And there's others that can't be with us this evening. We just want to take a moment to lift them up to you, Father God, through petition, through prayer. We lift up Sister Vi and Brother Roland to you, constantly dealing with leftover medical stuff from this accident. We lift up their daughter, Tina. Father God, she don't, she don't mean to be having this stuff in her life. And we just pray that... Uh, You'll, you'll deliver her from that stuff, Father. I break the bondage that sin, it takes us, it keeps us longer than we want to stay, Father. And, and we know that she, her heart's not wanting to be there. And we know that Sister Vi and Brother Roland are praying for the entire family. We just lift her up to you. Pray for our dear brother, Roy McColl, who's again battling pneumonia. Uh, still has a, a back brace healing up from a, an accident there, Father God. And we just pray that you'll deliver him from this pneumonia. Get him back to us here in, in church again, Father God. We love to see our saints. We love him tremendously and we miss him. We lift up Sister Claire Seely to you. Give her the desire to drink, Father God. Fill her up. Make her, make her thirsty for, for water, thirsty for your word of God because she's reading it out loud so, so fast and she's parched. You just pray that you'll give her that energy to want to drink, Father God. And, and be there with Brother Bill who's worried and concerned about her. Give them all the support that they need, all the resources they need, the people in their lives that can help them. Get them back to us. We lift up Sister Dot Carver to you, Brother Charlie. Been away for some time now, wanting to really come back and be part of the assembly here at church and be with us, be lifted up with our brothers and sisters. We just pray that you get them back to us. Pray healing over Sister Dot. We lift up Jeff and Linda Webster. You know the battle here at this house, Father God. And I just pray that you'll break the... The, the ability for Satan to get in Jeff's mind and, and dilute the thoughts again, lie to him, Father God, and think that he's not worthy of your salvation and of your mercy and grace. I lift up Sister Linda that she'll uh, have the endurance, uh, perseverance to continue to pray for him and, and be there for him. Might be the only church he gets, Father God. I just pray for her. Again, we pray for the leadership, the, the things that will happen in the future, Father God. We pray that your will's in it. Um, we just pray that you'll give us the guidance and the direction, the heavenly wisdom we need to, to make decisions and lead this church uh, that's honorable and pleasing to you, Father God. We just lift up Sister Laura's granddaughter, Eloise, who's, uh, who's sick and, and doesn't probably know what's going on with her, Father God, scared, and all those that are around her are nervous and under, can't understand what's going on either, Father God. We just pray for a, a healing touch for this little baby and comfort for the family and peace. Uh, we want to lift up Sister Ginger's friend, Jenny, for traveling mercies. And we also lift up Alice, a dear friend, best friend that's received the diagnosis of oral cancer. Father God, this can be such a scary, uh, scary information to receive. And we just pray that she'll call out to you, Father God. Call out to you for peace and comfort. We don't understand why we go through those things, Father God, only you do. We pray that it's a mighty testimony for her in the end. Lift up Sister Deanna Padrick, Brother Jim Padrick. You know the situation. We continue to pray, Father God, stand on your promises. Uh, just work things out for him. Get Sister Deanna back to us. We lift up Bob's neighbor, Bob. 88 years. And Father God, you're just so good. You know and you look out for your, for your sheep. Well, the, where the rest are okay and the ones gone off and, and might get hurt, Father God. You keep an eye on them. And we know that. This is evidence of that. We just thank you that Bob was there in the right time. Father God, we lift up Brother Earl. We love this man. Uh, just 
Fill him up with everything that he needs, Father God. We know his heart's right. We know that he's, he's wanting to come home to see you, be with Sister Norma. And, and for selfish reasons, we want to keep him around, Father God. But we just pray your will in his life. Pray for strength and endurance. Father God, again, just be with us here this evening. We lift all these prayer requests up to you in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying with us. We're going to sing some praise and worship songs. Um, if you can, stand up and join with us. I will bless the name of Jesus. Oh, I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing on. Justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. 
the mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people see his glory.
for everything you're doing for us. We again invite you to be with us. Bless and anoint this message. Bless and anoint Pastor Arlen, Father God. Speak through him. And Father God, we just thank you for all that you're doing for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You could be seated. We appreciate you singing with us. Pastor Arlen's going to come. We're looking forward to it. Well, as Pastor Rick said, it's good to see everybody on a rainy night. Kind of a, it rained on us all the way from Chin Road, almost to the Hillsborough County line. I mean rain. Hadn't seen rain like that in a long, long time. But we thank God because we needed it, didn't we? Amen. Very, very welcome rain. Well, tonight we're going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter 18. I'd like to read two scriptures first, but we'll be dealing with chapter 18 um, quite a bit. Well, I shouldn't say quite a bit. We only have 20-something minutes, so it won't be too long. Amen? So, <laughs> but that's plenty of time. Believe you me. Exodus 18, beginning in verse 13. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from morning until evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning until evening? Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this night. We thank you for the rain. We sing that song, Let It Rain. We not only need physical rain, but we need a, the latter rain. The rain to bring forth that harvest that is so desirable to you. So I pray, Father, as, as we experience this natural rain and it gives us a sense of well-being that we will experience your, your Holy Spirit, the rain of your Spirit coming down upon your churches. We thank you for it. We'll praise you for it, Father. We need you so desperately in these last times. We need that latter rain. And we'll thank you for it. We'll praise you for it. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. I'd like to title the message tonight, PBO. Now, <laughs> you might think that sounds like a hygiene problem or something. It is an acronym, of course, and it stands for Pastoral Burnout. PBO. More common than you think, especially in here in America, in the United States of America. Uh, so many pastors do burn out. They tell me that only like 60% of pastors that come out of seminary, young men, uh, make it to 45 years old as pastors. Most of them, 60% of them quit by the time they're that age. I think when you get about 50 years old, it's more, more, more like a little over 50% continue on in the ministry. So it's a very real, real situation. And here we have a situation with Moses 
And notice what he's doing. Let's look back at verse 14. And when Moses' father-in-law, now Moses is sitting here and he's giving instruction to all these people. Now the army's 600,000. So you can imagine the myriads of people, and he's giving them instruction from God's law, what God wants, the situations were arising, and they were coming to Moses and says, well, what does God say about this? How should we settle this situation? I've got something against my brother here, or he's got something against me. We need to know God's way. And he would give them counsel, and he'd tell them what they needed to do according to God's law. And Moses' father-in-law just happened to be visiting. He had brought his Moses' wife. Remember Moses left his wife and children and went to Egypt? And he delivered the children out of Egypt. Um, his father-in-law brings his wife and his two sons to him. Moses tells him all about what he's been doing and how God miraculously set them free from this Egypt, the bondage. And his father-in-law says, wow. Truly, you are serving the living God. You're, you're serving the highest God there is to be able to do the things that you've done. So he was there, and he witnessed this thing that Moses was doing. And notice what he said in the latter part. What is this thing that thou doest to the people, not for the people? What are you doing to these people? They're standing. You ever been in line all day from morning to night? Now, you know not everybody made it to Moses that day. They'd have to come back the next day and stand in line from morning to night. Now, I've stood in line for a couple of hours before, and that's no fun. But to stand there all day, and then at the end of the day, still maybe not be heard. That can be very frustrating. He says, what are you doing to these people, Moses, and to yourself? This is ridiculous. And he goes on in verse 15 of chapter 18. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people coming to me to inquire of God. I'm doing a good thing. And we're going to find that Jethro's not questioning it's a good thing or not. It's just the way that he's doing it. He says, man, they come inquire of me of God. God put me over them to deliver them. What else can I do? I'm just doing what I should do. They come to ask me what God wants. Isn't that what a minister should be? Verse 16. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one another. I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. That's what any good pastor would do, isn't it? People come to you, you show them what God says. People come to you, what, what does this mean? What does that mean? Or I don't understand this part of the Bible or certain things. You'd be able to help them out. That's what Moses was doing. Wasn't any problem with that. Wasn't what he was doing is how he was doing. In verse 17, and Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Moses, this is not good. Wasn't helping the people wasn't good. It's the fact that Moses was making them stay there all day, a lot of them in the line. And Moses himself was having to be there and make all these judgments. He said, this is not good. You can't, you can't handle this. No one could handle this for very long. In verse 18, that will surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Now, Jethro, his father-in-law, has given him some wisdom. Now, Moses doesn't have to listen to him. Moses could take the attitude, you know what? God speaks to me. God's the one who told me to go to Egypt. I don't need my father-in-law coming up here telling me what I ought to be doing. You ever had that attitude, guys? Not me. But he's going to give him some advice. Does Moses have to take it? I, no. But evidently he respects Jethro enough that he does receive this instruction. No doubt by now Moses was feeling the weight of this. Can you imagine? Can you imagine from morning to evening? Especially when you get somebody that's, that's hard-headed. <laughs> You know, you want them to move on, but no, they keep asking questions and other questions, and they got 50 questions for their time slot. So there's no doubt it was very frustrating. That will surely wear away. Hearken now unto my vo voice, verse 19. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, and thou mayest bring the causes unto God. No problem with what you're doing. And thou shalt teach them the ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. That's fine and good. Moreover, thou shalt provide 
out of all the people, able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of ten, and let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. But every small matter they shall judge, so, so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. He said, I'm going to give you some good advice, son. Delegate. Pick out some men that know the Lord, filled with his spirit, men that aren't covetous, they're not worried about this world, they're, they're, they're concerned about God and the things of God, and put them over. Us groups of people. And anytime there's a big matter, something really, really big, they'll bring it to you. You'll still have something to do, Moses, in the big matter. But the everyday little things, these men know. These men can help these people out. You don't have to do it. Let them. Now, there's a reason for that. Because even Moses was a burnt out. It doesn't matter who you are. It's not a sign of weakness. You can't handle all of that. Moses couldn't handle all of that. And Jethro gives him some very, very good advice. And he says, hearken. In other words, listen to what I'm saying. Take this to heart. Don't just let it go in your ears and you slough me off. Listen, Moses, I'm telling you this for your own good. Now, we know even in the secular world, this is good advice. Running a business or something. You've seen people, they burn the midnight oil. They try to keep the business going by themselves. And they need a couple more guys to help them out and to relieve them a little bit of the stress and the load. And the really wise ones do that. They branch out. They get help. They delegate. They pass the weight, distribute the weight around. But too many times, and I've seen it, I've done it, I've been guilty of it. You try to bear this burden alone. And it's too much. Just absolutely too much. We've seen the same thing happening in the early church. Remember? The church began to grow. There began to be a, some dispute about the widows, taking care of the widows. And the ministers at first, they were going down and helping these widows. Finally said, we, we can't do this. We, we can't leave our prayer and our studies. We've got to pick out some men full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. And they picked the deacons to help the ministers. It's the same principle that was happening here in the book of Exodus. So we see it moving into the church. It's not something foreign to us. We've got to let other people help. It's so important. It's not that you're putting your job off on someone else. Now, you, that can't happen. But hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. Not trying to bear this burden, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> all by yourself. And he goes on. Verse 23, if thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So, Mark, so, excuse me, so Moses hearkened. He listened. He took it to heart. He said, you know what? That sounds pretty good. That sounds reasonable. And this has become very difficult already. He listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard cases they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. So he found out it was very good advice. He hearkened to it. Now, we must listen ourselves today, right? And the reason I'm saying this is it's not just for Pastor Rick's benefit. But I want you to know, brother, you've got to take it to heart. You've got to listen. You can't do everything. And you're not saying you're trying to. Don't misunderstand me. But it can happen before you know it. It can all be heaped on your shoulders. And the old knees won't hold up under the weight. Spiritual knees I'm speaking about. You have to be very careful. Well, if you were to read the story on, you'd find out that Moses chose these men. And then later on. He anointed them. They went to the tabernacle. The Spirit of God fell on them, 70 of them. And they began to prophesy. Two were on the register, but I guess they weren't at the tabernacle that night. They began prophesying in the camp. Now, everybody thought Moses was the prophet. And he was a prophet. 
But they thought Moses should be the only prophet. And they went and more or less tattletailed. Moses, Moses, so-and-so and so-and-so was prophesying in the camp. And they thought surely Moses would say, well, you tell them to shut up, bring them to me. And I'll deal, I'm the prophet. I'm the man of God. I'll handle these situations. You tell, bring them to me. You know what Moses said? Would to God that they all prophesied. I would to God you were all prophets. Amen? That's the same thing Paul said in the New Testament. I would that you all spake in tongues, but rather that you prophesy. Because prophecy edifies the body. Tongues edifies oneself, if it's not interpreted. But prophecy builds everybody up. I would to God you all prophesied. Moses wasn't on some ego trip. So he began understanding things and how important it was to delegate, pick out these men that were worthy and give them these responsibilities. And that was his heart because no doubt by now he'd already seen the wisdom of what his father-in-law had given to him. Amen. Very very critical because as a pastor, if you're not careful, especially when you're first in the ministry, you're so full of zeal, you're so full of love of God and, and the church, and I mean, you just, it's an adrenaline rush almost. I mean, you're so pumped, and you just, come on, devil, come after me. I'm ready for you. I can take whatever you give me. Well, that's not true. You can't, amen, because he'll throw little foxes at you. Just little things. That's why I said, don't mess with the little things, Moses. Let, let these guys handle the little stuff. Don't be, don't be troubled up with all that nitpicking stuff. And stuff. Let, 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 let deacons and let the other ministers help you out in that situation. Now, when something really major comes up, something serious in the church, hey, bring the, bring the pastors, bring the, bring the elders, the deacons, bring the, the board of directors, whatever it takes to make these hard decisions. But even then, don't make them by yourself. Lean on the people that God, Pastor Arlen, why are you telling me? Because I should have learned it sooner. Amen. I'm telling you what I should have done sooner. Because let me tell you, people with good hearts will burn you out. I'm not talking about evil people. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about God-fearing Christians with needs. They'll burn you out. I remember one day I received a phone call from a gentleman. He said, Pastor Arlen, could you take me to the to the to fill my prescriptions? I really need my prescriptions. Could you could you take me? I said, well, sure. You know, I thought, well, let me finish up a few little things and I'll be right there. So I did. I finished up whatever I was doing. Went to his house. Of course, he was in no hurry. You know, it's like, okay, let's a little get on here. You know, get a little, little speed here. Uh, you know, older people they get kind of slow. <laughs> So finally, get in the car, pull out on 674. I said, okay, well, we're going to CVS or we're going to Walgreens? He said, no, I need to go to the VA in Tampa. Oh, from Bruce B. Downs and Fletcher. I said, oh, man. I said, well, okay, Lord, you know, I'll have to schedule a few things, you know, blah, blah, blah. Put this off until tomorrow, whatever it might be. He needs to go get his medicine. Took him up there. Of course, back then, they didn't have all these shuttles and everything. Parking was a premium. It was hard just to find a parking place in the VA. So we finally drove around, found a park, went inside, went in this room, opened the door, and it was packed. And there was a little machine. You pulled a number. Doop. Take your seat. Now, that number wasn't to get your prescription. That number was so you could go see the pharmacist. Four hours later, C6... <laughs> Five hours later, we finally have the medicine, and we're leaving Moffitt, uh, not, excuse me, the VA in there. And then I'm thinking, i got to get back, man. i got this going on. i got that going on. And get back. And he's all cheerful and gleeful and everything's great, man. It's great. Ben, will you pass it for six hours? This was fun. <laughs> Let's go out and eat. <laughs> yeah, and my wife. Let's just go eat. I said, brother, I'm sorry. i got to get back to the office, you know. Thanks for the invitation, but I got to go. Things like that. You know, people that mean well, and they really have a need, and to come find out, they'll mail them to your house. He liked to get out of the house. (laughs) 
I understand that. You know, you get tired. Yeah, they'll, they'll mail them right to your house. Little things like that. Those are little things. But those little things start becoming big things year after year after year. Or someone comes and says, Pastor, I need to talk to you about a scripture or something in the Bible. Can I come by the office tomorrow or whatever? Well, I got a so-and-so. It's, well, okay, by 11 o'clock. Okay, come. I said, no, I, I got a question. I said, well, you know, I won't be there in the morning, but my associate will be there. No, 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 no. Has to be the pastor. Has to be you. Uh, not, not, not the associate. I want the real pastor. You know, that's how people think. <laughs> and you get there and so, say, okay, well, what, what was your question? What, what was in the Word? Well, I, I wonder, the Apostle John, was he one of the original 12 disciples? You're like, are you kidding me? Our Sunday school kids could have told you that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not that you don't mind giving that answer from the Bible, but it's like, man, an associate or, or like I said, a Sunday school kid could have told you that. And that's a crude example, but you know what I'm saying? Little things like that, man. After a while, you start pulling your hair out now. Man, I've got bigger fish to fry here. You know? <laughs> Amen. So it's real. It's very, very real. And you have to guard against it. And I think something has happened in the churches in America. This is what I observed from 27 years of being a, a pastor of this church. And it's something you have to be careful with, Rick. I wasn't careful enough with it. But people will get to that place where they say, well, I, I don't want the associate. I want the real pastor, senior pastor. You know, need so-and-so to visit, so-and-so in the hospital tomorrow. So, well, so-and-so. No, 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 no. The senior pastor has to go. And then all of a sudden, your associate picks up on that and says, you know what? They don't want me. They want the senior pastor. And it's tendency to let that slide. And then the next thing you know, you're doing everything. You're doing everything. And the mentality even creeps into your mind that the senior pastor has to do it all. Well, that's wrong. We've got this mentality because senior pastor, associate pastor, he's the big dog. If I don't get him, I'm second rate. That's not how we look at it, or we shouldn't be looked at. But that's too many times what people think. Matter of fact, I had one man tell me I'd, I'd sent someone to pray for him or something. They said, won't you just send your sheep dogs, pastor? You're supposed to be the pastor that looks after the sheep. You're, you're just sending your sheep dogs. Oh, man, what a horrible attitude, you know, about another minister. It's like they're just a sheepdog. I wanted you. I wanted the, the big cheese. <laughs> well, you're fitting to get a big cheese. But anyway, then you have to, add, you have to adjust your attitude. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you have to be very careful. And uh, I've said all that to, to say this. We had hoped that Brother Patrick would be Pastor Rick's associate. And, and it looked good at first. It looked, it looked like a good fit. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. As you all know, it just didn't pan out. Patrick seems to be happy now with his new wife. I don't know. That's between him and God. But we're still faced with the situation. Pastor Rick needs an associate. Now, I've been filling in, trying to help on Wednesday nights. But that's, that's not what he needs. He needs an associate working together with them. And they can delegate and, and you go see so-and-so and I'll go see. You can't be but one place at one time. But there's needs that arise in the church and it takes more than one. You said I didn't understand these things. I said, oh, you're preaching. You're just lazy. You don't want to do something. You just want to do it. So you're going to push it off on somebody else. That's not true. It can be true, obviously. That's why some of the really big churches, they have a lot of pastors. Because one person cannot meet all those needs. The last thing we want to do is for Rick to catch PBO. <laughs> Pastor burnout. <laughs> you know, I read something. They said there's more PBO in the churches per capita, if however you want to say it, than there is PTSD coming out of the military. There's more pastors suffering from pastor burnout 
than there is people coming out of the military with PTSD. And we know how real PTSD is. And pastor burnout can be the very same thing. And it's something you have to guard. Against. And church, it involves all of us. It's not just the pastor. You have to be mindful of it too. And if you do have some kind of responsibility to help the pastor, then do it. But do it joyfully. Knowing that you're doing exactly what the Bible says. You're taking your part. Maybe it's a small thing. Maybe it's something little. But don't look at it like, hey, throw me the bone, throw me the crumb. No, that's not how it works at all. All those things were important to God. Every one of those people were important. But God, Moses could not get to every one of them. There was another place he asked God, God, did I give birth to all these people? Do you expect to carry, me to carry them like a mother or like a father or a nursing child? I mean, really, God? I mean, he was kind of upset about things because it was getting the best of him. I mean, did I give birth to these people? Are they my begotten? He was burning out. And you probably would have been too if every time you turned around they were murmuring and complaining. God had given them manna, manna from heaven, and they complained about it. We want some meat. I said, go to Arby's. <laughs> We won't meet in Egypt. We had garlics and fish and onions and cucumbers and all this stuff. And you brought us out in this wilderness just to eat this coriander seed bread. This, we're sick of it. We, we loathe this manna. We want some meat. God said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give them some meat. Quail. Now, I like quail. Man, that's a fine bird to me as far as I'm concerned. I love quail. The Bible says, and he told them, said, they're going to eat quail until it comes out of their noses. They're going to, do you think you hate manna? You're going to eat so much quail that it's going to run out of their noses. That's the kind of stuff that Moses had to deal with. That's why he needed help. And church is the same thing. I just want to encourage you tonight. I know you're behind Pastor Rick. I really, I know you are. I, I can sense it. The church is growing. Even, in the, even during the summertime, the, church, the crowds have been pretty good. I've noticed it's picked up. Yeah. And that, that's great. So we need to, to support him and realize he cannot do it all. I'm not saying you're trying to do it all, Pastor Rick. Don't. Don't. Kimberly, don't let him. Okay. All right. I got you now, brother. I'll tell on you. <laughs> it's no good for you, and then it's no good for the church. You see... A church with a burnout pastor is not being fed the way they should be. So it's for your benefit to support your pastor. Paul had to deal with situations like this. He had ministers that failed him. Demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. Well, he didn't just quit. But he understood there is strain, there is difficulty in being in the ministry, and some don't make it. And they leave it. But Paul knew he had a calling. He continued on. Amen. How he didn't burn out is beyond me. But anyhow, we know he said, I got to finish my course that was set before me. So as the weeks and months progress, Pastor Rick is going to come in more need and more need of an associate. And church, be praying about it. This is not some trivial thing. This is a very serious thing. And I wanted to bring it to your attention because I'm not permanent. I know some of you had hoped maybe I would be, but I'm not. I'm not the guy. It's time to pick an associate to help Pastor Rick. I'm filling in, tr trying to, I didn't want to just dump the whole thing on him. You know, Wednesday nights is tough to do Sunday and Wednesday night and the thing, the music, you know, part of the music, tried to come back and help in that. But it's still, it is a temporary thing. So I want you to know that. I don't want anybody to say, well, we thought everything was fine. Everything is fine. Amen? I just got to get some fishing done. <laughs> Why don't you stand? Let's be dismissed. And that includes Penny. When I say me, y'all know that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the spirit that we sense here tonight, the, the congregation. What a lovely congregation this is. And through the many years, how they have loved Penny and I unbelievably. And we thank you so much for that, Lord God. We could not have served, I don't believe, in a more loving church than Sun City 
Christian Center. And we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. But we know that, that this church is in your heart. It is still in our heart, Father. And our heart is for this church to move on into the next level, to, to move into that next place of ministry. There are so many people that are, are lost out there and dying and going to a devil's hell. And we don't want that, Lord God. We want to make every opportunity we can for the exact person to be here. So we just prayed, Father, that you would lead, and as Brother Rick has been for the last few weeks, pray for the leadership of this church. Pray for us because we have made some bad choices. And we don't want to continue doing that, Father. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Keep us safe as we go home. In Jesus' name, amen. And God bless you. You are dismissed. Love you guys. Amen.